My name is James Reeves, and I have been slowly devolving over the past few months. Well, I mean, my whole life generally has been a slow, hellish descent, but I'm talking about shotgun content specifically. I made a video this past spring with the Beretta 1301, which might be right now my favorite shotgun. You all asked me to make a video with something a little bit more affordable. As usual, the gun gurus in the comments insisted that I was wasting money on my fancy 1301, and all I needed was a Black Aces Tactical $400 semi-auto S-Max Pro. So I bought that and kitted it up for a total of $500, subjected it to a 500 round torture test, and interesting results. I'm going to drop a card here so you can see the video, but needless to say, the just as good gang was BTFO'd as usual. But as is the case with TFB TV comments, you guys wanted more, 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 or I guess less, less, less. You dared me to go cheaper. Many of you swear by the Mossberg Maverick 88, a $200 pump shotgun that some believe is made in Mexico. So I went to Tijuana to do some research and I uh, poked around the Zona Norte. I didn't see a single Maverick 88. This was a productive work trip. I told Lindsay, because I discovered that the truth is that the Maverick 88 is made right over the border on the Rio Grande, 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 right in eye shot of Mexico. I mean, literal eye shot of Mexico, not in Mexico as widely believed. Mossberg's flagship shotgun for the past 60 years has always been the dependable Mossberg 500 series, including the robust Mossberg 590, which passed the Army's 3443E qualification, a 3,000 round full power buckshot torture test. Back in the 1980s, Mossberg noticed that cheap imports were starting to eat into its pump gun market share, and they decided that perhaps not everyone needed a mil spec shotgun for blasting cow patties on the farm. Accordingly, in 1988, Mossy began making a more economic shotgun in Eagle Pass, which is seated in Maverick County, Texas. So there you go. The Maverick 88 got its name. And I accept your challenge, TFB TV viewers. Apparently, so does Mossberg, as the Moss Boys reached out to me when they heard I was doing this test, and they basically dared me to test the 88. They were confident. If I were them, I wouldn't be so confident after what happened in the last cheap shotgun test, especially considering that this is like the grocery store value brand equivalent of shotguns. We're going to subject the Mossberg 88 to a 500 round torture test of birdshot with some big birdshot and at least 103 inch magnum rounds in this test, some buckshot, all kinds of shit. I'm sure the Mossberg 500 could handle this, but the 88, who knows? Before we attack the Mossberg 88, what is the Mossberg 88? It's essentially a slightly defeatured, budget-priced Mossberg 500. It has all the same internal design as the Model 500, and the guns are, in fact, very similar. Externally, there are some minor cost-cutting differences. It has a blued finish instead of a parkerized finish. Maverick 88 owners often say that the bluing doesn't hold up to Florida or Louisiana humidity, so I cut that off at the pass. I took the Maverick 88 to Gretna Gunworks to get a custom Krylon job, and the Produce Prince of Louisiana, Mr. Brendan Becknell of Tomato Tactical, gave the Mossberg 88 a dazzle camo job. It looks great, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I didn't think so either, but he was kind enough to do it for free, and at least the gun probably won't rust now. So I'm still in the hole for only 200 bucks, but now I had to buy gear because the whole point of these videos is to try to make a full home defense shotgun on a budget. As usual, I'll drop links to what I got in the comments or the description or something. I splurged a whole $23 on a GG and g sling light mount combo and 10 bucks on a UTG one inch light mount. As I said in the last budget shotgun video, the Streamlight Polytac for 40 bucks is the least I can stand to spend on a flashlight. So I used the same one that famously flopped off of the Black Aces shotgun in that video. I got a Troy Safari sling on clearance from Primary Arms for 10 bucks. It's actually a really nice sling, but the complete wrong kind of sling for this shotgun. It's made for stabilizing a standing shot on Safari, and the only thing I was hunting for was a good deal. I just wanted something that would keep someone from yanking the shotgun out of my hands. So the Troy will do. I also got an HK style sling hook from Blue Force Gear for seven bucks to interface with the GG and G mount. If you're checking the running tab here, my total is exactly $280 for a ready to run home defense shotgun with sling, light, 
everything good to go. Wow, we haven't seen this kind of cost cutting since the North Korean ballistic missile program. I also use the Excellent Elite Spanker. Again, that's what they're called. That's the name of them, Excellent Elite Spanker shotgun cards from the last video. They are not excellent, nor are they elite. They're just okay, but they cost less than the STAC shotgun cards that I prefer. At the time of the last video, the Spankers were $8 each, but now because of their newfound spankularity, they've raised the price to $9 a pop. Might be a better deal to spring the extra six bucks and just get the STAC at this point, as you'll see in this video. As I said in the last few videos, I don't think you should be buying hard side saddles anymore. Those are so 1997 at this point. If you want my reasoning on this, check out my how to set up your shotgun video. I'll drop a card here. Long and short of it, your shotgun goes dry, you start pulling out of the side saddle. Your side saddle goes dry, you're screwed. With the soft shotgun cards, you can just rip one off and attach a new one to this Velcro and you've got a fully loaded side saddle. Another note, if you want to round it out and spend exactly 300 bucks, the next absolute no-brainer purchase is the M Carbo Trigger Kit, which reduces the mediocre Maverick 88 trigger from 8.5 pounds to just 5 pounds, or a little bit under. It's only 20 bucks, so there you have it. For three bills, a complete, viable, and not very shitty home defense shotgun. Unlike the 500, the Maverick 88 has a trigger guard mounted cross bolt safety instead of the Tang mounted safety from the 500 series. I prefer the cross bolt safety from the Remington 870 and the Beretta 1301 to the one on the Mav, but the 88 safety is acceptable. It also has a pinned four end pump, which means changing the pump furniture itself out is going to be very difficult. Not impossible, just hard, but I don't really care that much about it, getting a Gucci handguard on my $200 scatter gap. Other than that, the Maverick 88 is very, very similar to the 500 and most of the vast ocean of Mossberg 500 parts and accessories will work with the 88. At this point, I'm feeling pretty good about the 88, at least till we got it out to the range. Hey everyone, James with TFB TV. If you are into cheap shotguns and short shorts, you're in the right place, my friend. We've got the Maverick 88 shotgun made by Mossberg. This is an economy priced shotgun, 200 bucks. Actually was a real bitch to get one. They're flying off the shelves right now. They're extremely popular. You may remember I used the Black Aces Tactical S-Max shotgun. A few months back, we did a video, a little torture test. We tried to run 500 rounds through it and it took a crap at 416 rounds. We're going to do the exact same thing with the Mossberg 88 this week, but I've got the entire crew from the St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center. They're gonna be helping me out. Jordan. Mason. Christian Chestnut. Thomas Chestnut. Kelsey Bennett. Devin Kraft. I've got 505 rounds of 12 gauge. About half of it is new production birdshot. All the rest of it is random buckshot, turkey, you name it. We've got all kinds of crap that we're going to throw at the Mossberg Maverick 88, and we're going to see if it does better than the Black Aces Tactical. Now, the funny thing is Mossberg found out that I was doing this video, and they more or less said, bring it on. They sent me an email. They said, dude, no sweat. 505 rounds, throw whatever you want at it. The shotgun's going to be fine. And I'm going to be really impressed if that's true, because this is, again, a $195 shotgun. We're going to go ahead and get to work. Put it through the paces, tag team in this thing. So, is it gonna hold up? You're gonna have to watch and find out. You ready? Here we go. Where's the effing safety on this thing? There we go.
25 rounds of old school Federal Nitro Mag. This stuff is hot, and again, this was part of what killed the Turkish shotgun in the last video. Okay, let's do it. Oh God, green. And that is it. 505 rounds killed every single accessory on this shotgun, but shotgun still standing, it's still working. Mossberg, they weren't lying. They said their little $200 shotgun could go the distance, and it did. Funny enough, we got FDE furniture on here. I mean, we ran this thing so hard that the finish is actually starting to come off the pump. For $200, it's pretty hard to argue with this thing. Conclusions. First, the Maverick 88 ran like a champ. Literally no issues at all. We ran 505 rounds through this gun nonstop. Myself and everyone at St. Bernard Indoor got it running back to back to back to back to the point that the barrel was too hot to touch the entire time. I checked the timestamps on the video where we started and the video clip where we ended. We started at 8.07. We concluded at 9.24. So that means we fired one round every nine seconds for 77 straight minutes. Trying to mount accessories on the Maverick 88 for this test was like trying to put a Halloween costume on a cat. It wasn't gonna stay on and it wasn't having it. Pumps have no reciprocating mass to absorb any of that recoil, so it's all transmitted back to the shooter, back to your shoulder, and whatever else you mount on your gun. I had no accessory issues over two days and 1,100 rounds with my 1301, but boy, oh boy, the Maverick 88 chewed up and spit out every single accessory we mounted on this son of a bitch. The recoil shot after shot over and over and over, plus pumping the action took the troll toll on the kit we bought. First, the shotgun cards. <laughs> the Spankers worked fine on the lighter recoiling semi-auto Black Aces tactical shotgun as long as you were brass up. Brass down because of the rims, they weren't providing any support, they'd fall out. And they didn't do so hot on the Mossberg. Didn't matter, brass up or brass down, especially with high power loads. The Spankers elastic simply was not strong enough to hold it together and you'd spill spare rounds all over the place with the Spankers. The s tax not at all. So that's your better buy. As usual, fanny pack carry straight up beat ass. It was quick, it was efficient. It's becoming my favorite way to reload after your side saddle runs dry. Larger fanny packs can hold nearly two boxes of shells. Keep one by the bed and you've got fast access to one or two boxes of shells in addition to what's in and on your shotgun. I'll drop a card to my fanny pack video from this past summer and some links to some of my favorite fanny packs in the description. The same as last time, the light mount was the first accessory to take a poop. Oh! No. It happened! UTG, who would have known? Quality construction. It actually just came loose, to be fair. Um, so, I, I'm not upset at it. How many rounds we at, guys? Easy. Like 390? Yeah. 392? Just about. Ish, so, no, it actually just came loose. I mean, really, we should have Loctited this effing thing on there. Last time, I used an ill-fitting Monstrum mount from Amazon, some Chinese piece of shit that fell off almost right away. This time, instead of the first handful of rounds, it was a few hundred rounds before the UTG mount I bought fell off, but I don't solely blame the mount. I'm surprised it stayed on as long as it did, to be honest, without anybody checking on it. Nobody cared about the old UTG. Nobody cared to check on it, see how it's doing, ask how its day's been so far. Been a little bumpy. The QD screw just got a little bit loose and the thing fell off. We retightened it and we got on with it. The flashlight actually stuck around until a new issue showed up. The GG and G Picatinny mount screwed itself when it literally unscrewed itself and it took the flashlight with it. Flashlight's still in it. The flashlight's still in it. <laughs> There it goes. That was it. I don't think anything broke. I think just a screw literally backed out. All that happened was just the uh, the screws backed out of it. So 
I mean, really what we're learning here is that shooting a pump action shotgun puts a lot more stress, it seems like. We have lost all of our accessories, like literally 100% of our accessories dead. Guys, what I'm trying to say is these screws actually came out of the mount. It was pretty crazy. I'm sure some Loctite would help. Maybe GG&G should consider Loctiting it or welding the screws at the factory, since it seems unlikely that anyone's going to replace the rail segment on the mount. That said, the actual mount itself, you can see, is still here. The little ring that's attached to the mag tube that the rail section attached to. It stayed on for the whole ride. Funny enough, the non-stop shooting and racking was so violent that the Troy sling unbelievably loosened itself from its own loops. Let's see, what happened here? Oh, it just came unslung, look at that. So, you guys see you got a little HK loop. Um, and it just merely came unslung. Like that's how much we've shot. All right, goodbye safari sling. That's a first for me. I've never seen a sling slip from a buckle under recoil. This just shows you how much wear and tear the shotgun was enduring, especially with the obscene amount of three inch magnums that we ran through the Maverick. You'll never guess the next part to piece out from this rig. Once we removed the sling, the HK sling loop had no weight to soften the recoil, so it was just up there on the mag tube free balling. So I said that the shotgun killed all the accessories a few minutes ago that was partially true we still had a functioning hk hook style sling attachment this is a blue force gear which is as good as it gets right this is not like some cheap amazon chinese two dollar because you can get these it's really easy to get these amazon ebay whatever for a couple bucks a pop no this is the best of the best blue force gear and look at that it's like christian astutely observed it looks a little bit like an AR front sight post now, doesn't it? Completely split, I mean, this is steel. The repeated action was so intense that the steel sling mount did something I would have never expected to happen. Now about that flashlight, the Streamlight Polytac. Streamlight claims the Polytac's quote unquote impervious to recoil. Surprisingly, the $40 Streamlight held up as advertised. The light started going dim towards the end of the test, but Streamlight claims that after three hours, the light will be operating at only about 10% of its brightness. I would say that using it for the Black Aces tactical video and for this video, it was probably on track for that advertised battery life. It had been on for at least an hour and a half total, so it makes sense that it was about at half brightness or less by the end of the video. I'm a surefire guy, but I can't hide how impressed I was with this little $40 plastic torch. Mossberg has every right to be confident in the Mossberg 88. I was shocked at the abuse this gun took. Some might say it's only 500 rounds in this torture test, but you're applying pistol or rifle logic to a shotgun problem. 500 rounds with a shotgun is a lot different than 500 rounds from an AR, just like 500 rounds from a tank's main gun is different than 500 rounds from a shotgun. For fun, I googled it and tank guns only have a few hundred rounds of service life. I'm sure an engineer that's out there watching the channel will pop in and save my ass on this one, but my best guess about why shotguns wear down faster is that they have a lot of powder and a little bit of God's wrath in every hole. Shoot 500 rounds through your AK and tell me if the f***ing sling falls off. Remember, a softer shooting Turkish shotgun couldn't even make it 500 rounds without dying in our video a few weeks back. So we had no issues whatsoever with the humble Mossberg 88. It's still in fighting shape. We wore off the finish. We absolutely brutalized every accessory this gun had on it, but the 88 is still down to clown. I would say your essentials are to get at least a Krylon job if you live in the South. That'll cost you three bucks. A sling is cheap and a functional upgrade. Same with the shotgun card side saddle. Spend 15 bucks on the S-Tac. A light's useful, but it'll be one of your more expensive buys, although the $40 Polytac certainly did the trick for us. Finally, I'd spend 20 bucks at M Carbo on the cheapest trigger upgrade. That isn't a spit shine, it's fantastic. By the way, none of these people sponsor us. We get by based on the gun ads that we sell before our YouTube videos. A lot of people are like, oh my God, I'm seeing gun ads on YouTube. It's not YouTube that's placing those. We're demonetized, we're placing those. I don't know how it works, but it works. But our primary source of support is from our Patreon and our Subscribestar supporters. We're honest and we're transparent with you guys 
because you support us. We don't take money for positive reviews, so we're not like, hey, Mossberg, yay, this is great, now give us $6,000. So consider helping us out on Patreon or Subscribestar. Keeps us independent. Ventura Munitions provides some of the ammo that we use in these videos, and Top Gun Supply gives us no money, they just give away four guns to our Patreon and Subscribestar supporters every month. If you wanna know how to win the drawing, Join Patreon or Subscribestar at the $5 or the $10 level, and you're automatically entered to win a free gun every month. But check out our full rules at tfbtv.gun.team. Thanks, as usual, though, for watching. Couldn't do it without you. Take care. <laughs> Lean into it. Lean <laughs> forward. Oh, my shoulder's gonna hurt. That was fun. It's always fun.